Hey guys, it's Mr. Kenny. I'm back with DNA Technology Part 3. It's the last of it, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, plasmids. Now, when we talk about um, gel electrophoresis, we know that restriction enzymes, enzymes cut the DNA to different lengths, which causes it to pull out in different regions on the gel electrophoresis. Well, restriction enzymes can be used for a lot of different reasons. Uh, we actually use restriction enzymes to cut genes of interest that we, or genes that we're interested in, out of an organism's DNA. And then we cut a plasmid, which remembers a bacterial DNA with the same restriction enzyme, and then those stick together. And we can create bacteria that can produce um, things that we want them to produce. Now, the way we do this is, first of all, we have to make sure that whenever we mix the plasmids with our uh, appropriate gene that we want that actually uptakes into the bacteria. And the way we do this, we use what's called a selective marker. Now, a selective marker is simply usually an antibiotic resistance. So if we attach an antibiotic resistance onto the gene that we're interested in and inject that into the plasma, then what we can do is we can grow the bacteria on a plate of antibiotic and if it doesn't have the antibiotic, it dies. For example, so if we look over here at this plate, this is the plate with all the plasmids in just a nutrient broth, uh, a nutrient broth plate, and all these different types of bacteria are growing because they all can grow on this broth. Now, if we put it with ampicillin, which is an antibiotic, inside the broth, then the only ones that are able to grow are the ones that not only took up the marker that we're looking for, but they also took up the ampicillin resistance. So we're able to get just the plasmids that successfully up to, up to what we want them to take up. All right. Now, we can also make sure that the gene works. For example, it, to make sure that the LAC-Z the LAC gene um, is broken or not broken, and make sure it works for in this particular example. What we would do is, if the bacteria has taken up the lac Z gene that is actually working, cause it to turn the bacteria blue so we know it works. And in the other case, if it's not working, then the bacteria stays white. And this way we can even select if we want the, back, the, the particular gene to be functioning or not functioning, and we can select them from there as well. So it goes through a whole process of selecting to find exactly that gene of interest that we want uh, has been placed into it. So now we have to find the gene of interest. To find the gene of interest, what we do is we use DNA hybridization, which is simply splitting the DNA apart. And then we wash that DNA that's been split apart into a liquid that has a labeled probe, a certain sequence, a TTACC or CCCA or whatever, that a certain sequence that has actually a radioactive tag on it so that whenever we look at it in our gel electrophoresis, it will actually glow. So that way we can find just the gene that we want to be looking for and where it's found at in the DNA. And this is called the southern blot process is where we're actually radioactively tagging what we want. Now, you can imagine that we go on and we can make whole libraries of segments of DNA by using these restriction enzymes, and, and they have these setting on call. Uh, I recently worked this summer in a lab um, up in Raleigh, and they have a certain um, plasma that's already been cut with ECR1 or um, is ampicillin resistant or whatever. So they have this storehouse, this library that they use to make this process like go a little bit faster. Now you do realize that humans, we have a problem finding our, getting a library like that for us because we have so much junk. We have all these introns, right? They go in. So every, when we cut it, they're all going to be a little bit different. So how do we go about cleaning this up? Well, we go about cleaning this up by not starting with DNA, but start with mRNA because remember, mRNA has the introns taking out. But we still need to get back to the DNA so we can put that into a plasma to clone it. And we use reverse transcriptase. And if you remember what reverse transcriptase came from, it comes from RNA viruses. So we actually use some of their technology to benefit us. 
and we can actually create what's called C DNA, which is copy DNA. I hadn't even heard about this to a, a few years ago, um, but C DNA is called copy DNA, and this is DNA that has been created from RNA through reverse transcriptase. And you know, we can we've used this technology to make things like insulin, where we've taken uh, RNA, we've converted it back to DNA, we put that DNA into bacteria, and made bacteria make human insulin. So. Um, just think about what the pro possibilities of all this occurring are. Uh, it blows the mind, really. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon.